On this day, the 15th of November, 1889, Emperor Dom Pedro II is deposed in a military coup in Brazil. Something that many people don't realize is, unlike its Spanish neighbors, Portuguese Brazil didn't become a republic, not immediately. In fact, the Portuguese royal family had been in residence in Rio de Janeiro since they fled from Lisbon during the Napoleonic invasion of Portugal. So, after the war had ended, they stayed in Rio de Janeiro. They must have liked it there. Very hot there, but it is quite a beautiful place. And it was new, and it was safe, and they were an ocean away from the chaos in Europe. They didn't seem all too eager to go home. However, at some point, the king did go home because there was problems in Portugal. He left his son, who became Dom Pedro I of Brazil, and he was the one that initiated the events that led to Brazilian independence. So Brazilian independence was led by a member of the Portuguese royal family, who then declared himself the emperor, and was supported by most of the people in Brazil. He had a son, and at, when, he, when, the son, when he was very young, when the son was very young, Pedro I scarpered back off to Portugal because the throne became vacant, and he wanted that, and he preferred it instead of the Brazilian imperial throne. Which, I don't know, being an emperor rather than a king, I think I'd prefer to be an emperor. Especially in a huge country like Brazil. It'd be kind of cool. However, so he, will, he goes off and leaves his young son, basically abandons him, and Dom Pedro II becomes the emperor of Brazil. He had a very lonely childhood. His dad wasn't there, mum wasn't there taken care of by nurses and various teachers and advisors. But he was an intelligent fellow, learned many languages, and from everything I can read, and everything I've seen, he was an excellent leader. He ruled Brazil justly and liberally. Brazil, unlike its neighbours, under his rule, had many decades of security and peace. Um, it was the only country in Latin America that wasn't having a civil war, that wasn't falling apart, that wasn't having genocidal conflicts out in the boonies, and it was the only place that had its own parliament that was elected. Um, not universal, but it was pretty good for the standard of the day. There was a free press, there was free speech, and industry was encouraged, and Brazil was seen as a rising country. Now, one of the big reasons for the military uh, coup in 1889 was the abolition of slavery. Brazil was the last country to finish slavery in the Western Hemisphere. But they had been tiptoeing towards it for a good while. In 1871, the Emperor Dom Pedro decreed that all children under the age of 12 who had been born slaves were to be free, and that from then on all children born to slaves would be free. So this was the first step. A few years later, 1885, he declared that all slaves who had reached the age of 60 
would be freed as well. So I suppose retirement, in a way. Now, in 1888, a year before, well, yeah, about just over a year before the military coup, Don Pedro went to Europe because he was ill. He ended up going to Paris, and then he stayed in Baden-Baden for a bit. He toured around and met Queen Victoria. He met uh, the King of Italy and, very, and the Kaiser, Germany, and various other peoples. Uh, all very important, and that sort of thing. Whilst he was away, his daughter and heir, Princess Isabel, who had been declared regent, signed a law called the Golden Law that abolished slavery altogether. It was a two-line act. It just said that slavery had been abolished and that there was there would be no one held in slavery no matter um, what law they were looking for, basically. Uh, I should have had that in front of me. But it was a very short and succinct law, and they wanted it to be short and succinct because they wanted to make the point there was no way around it, there's no loophole, there was nothing. Now there was a problem, there was no compensation towards anyone, so the slaves didn't get any compensation or any sort of help out of slavery, so many of them would have ended up just working for the same guys but just being paid a pittance. Um, and the landowners didn't get any compensation. And that may have been a bit of a mistake because it was the landowners with the military guys that organized this coup. Now, Pedro II was wildly popular. It's hard to find any criticism of him, except the criticism I've seen is that he didn't really want to be emperor. He was bored by it. He felt that Brazil was going to be a republic at some point, and he didn't have his heart wasn't in it. Uh, but when, but he had felt a sense of duty, and so he did his job. But he wasn't enthusiastic about it, and he did, could he didn't think that his daughter should be the head of state or an empress. I don't know why, because Russia's had empresses and England's had queens and Austria has had an empress, so I don't understand why he was so against that, but he was. And he felt that she, and she apparently wasn't all that into it either. I, I, I have no idea of all these people not being interested in being an emperor or an empress. Very odd. So, now, when he returned in late 1888, he then well, spent his time going up to Petropolis, which is a city in the hills above Rio de Janeiro, where there's a royal palace. It's up in the cooler part of the region, so they would regularly go there, especially with the, the seasonal heat they get in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, the military, at this point, decided to get rid of him. And they did it secretly, in a way that wouldn't be opposed, because they knew that if they just said, oh, you're gone, he would go. He wouldn't put up a fight, which he didn't. Neither did his daughter. If he had said no, if he had gone to the people and appealed to them, it's quite likely that they would have been crushed very quickly and he would have remained on the throne, or perhaps he would have abdicated in favour of his grandson or his daughter. Could very easily have happened. And so it's almost a mistake that Brazil became a republic. And even after that, there was a lot of people who resented the fact that the military and the landowners had got rid of the emperor and his family. And so much so that in 1992, or 1993, sorry, they had a referendum, a constitutional referendum in Brazil. One of the options was, should Brazil restore the monarchy, 
or not. He was defeated, big time. Only 13% of Brazilians voted for it. But 13% of Brazilians is quite a lot of people. That's... That's like what, 25 million people today? A lot of people. And it does seem as well that there is a very healthy monarchist society in Brazil. And it seems that monarchism, or the idea of restoring the monarchy, is growing. I suppose when you've had decades of corrupt politics and presidents that come and go, and you're probably thinking, hmm, that Dom Pedro was good. Maybe we can have someone like him in charge again, and we can have a nice stable polity. But probably won't happen anytime soon. So, on this day, the 15th of November, 1889, the beloved Dom Pedro II, Emperor of Brazil, was deposed in a coup. He didn't resist, he accepted it very quickly, and within 24 hours he and his family were sailing to Europe and to exile. He was to die in Paris only a few years later, bit of a broken man, to be honest. Great pity. Anyway, if you like these videos, subscribe, like, and comment, and come back tomorrow for more.